together to worship him. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to turn to Matthew in the 7th chapter, verses 14. Matthew in the 7th chapter, verses 14. It says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Let us pray. Our precious and heavenly Father, today as we have gathered, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would come and to minister unto us, Lord. And as you speak to us, Lord, this morning, that we would give us the reassurance that we know without a doubt that we are a child of yours. And Lord, I pray that you would search our hearts, Lord, and to mold us and to make us into the things that you would have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have you ever... Ever heard anyone say that there's no place like home? You know, really, there is, there is, there truly is no place like home. As growing up, you can remember the things and memories, and you find out that the place where you grow up or the home that you grew up in is generally where memories were created, where life really began, where memories, like I said, the memories were created and uh, uh, bonds begin to be informed as your family relationships, we find, that begin there, and Truly, you have the memories of things that you've done in your past as, as a child and even as an adult, but you realize that there truly is no place like home. Once in a while, we've all been there where we've had to take a trip or some, we're going to go somewhere. and Maybe it required that you've been out on the road for a few days or a lot of sitting and driving, not counting. You know, today we have a lot of people fly and go different places, but whatever the situation is where you go, most of us have been there before where we had to take a trip or go on somewhere, or even on a vacation sometimes, and, and that we go and seek enjoyment. But after a few days of driving, or wherever it is that you go, if, it, if it's that long of a trip, you begin the, the, the funness begins to wear off, doesn't it? Because of the sitting around all the time. And you begin to think about that there is really no place like home, even though this is fun to get out and to do these things, or to go on vacation, and to travel and to do other things. After a while, home calls us back, doesn't it? you begin to feel like there's no place like home. Maybe it's because of the routine that we've got into in life and that we miss it. Because, it, you know, it, it is, life goes a little bit better if you have a routine, it seems like. And, and uh, for some people that are retired, maybe you don't have a routine so much. But, you know, it seems to me as, as busy as life is, if you get into that routine, things seem to go a lot better. And when you get out of it after a while, you, you kind of miss it because you've done it for so long. But after a while, no matter where you are or what you're doing, it does seem like that home does call you back. Call it homesick or whatever you may call it. Some people have a hard time getting away from home, but after a long period or just a few weeks, you begin to realize, wow, how good home does feel to you. The comfort of your own bed, something that you're used to, or your lazy boy or whatever it is that you enjoy at home, or just the routine of doing the things that you do each and every day. And maybe missing some friends or or people that you get are acquainted with each and every day, you miss those things, and there truly is no place like home. Whatever the reason, like I said, it, home does call us back. You know, throughout our country, we find that there are all kinds of roads. And, uh, you know, to get here this morning, you had to travel on a road to get here, and some roads you know by name, and some that you don't. But no matter what road you take, these roads have, have a purpose and a place, and they take you somewhere. In some good places, and some not so good. Some of these roads you, you know because they're common to you, maybe because you travel them each and every day. Some you may not know because you're not familiar with them, and, and maybe they have a different nickname or so, and you know people call them by other names. But no matter what they are, they're still roads that it will take you somewhere. In God's Word, the Bible lays out lots of different kinds of roads for us. And in some that we're familiar with, and you know, the road to Damascus and, and to Jerusalem and all these different roads that, you know, that, that the Bible mentions throughout, throughout the Scriptures. And some of these have, have names that we recognize. And because, maybe because of great events that took place or different things that have taken place throughout the Bible. But for some reason, these roads will stick in our minds. But like, like the roads that we travel today in, 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 during Scripture, these roads were designed to take people somewhere to do something in life or to take them someplace. Some locations, like I said, are good and some are not so good. In the book of Matthew 7, 13 through 14, it says, it says Enter ye into the 
enter ye at the straight gates. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there will, which will go in thereat. And then 14 says, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there will be that find it. You know, it talks about gates, but these are gates that lead to roads that people will have to travel down life that the scripture talks about. And, you know, and each and every, sooner or later, each and every one of us are going to have to choose which one of these roads we will decide to take in life. And as scripture mentions, it's a, you know, one is wide, and many people will take it because it's an easy road. It's an easy path, and they will, t- they will continue to take, they will take that because it's easy. The, the scripture describes me two different, like I said, two different paths or roads leading to two different directions. One seems to be wide and well acceptable because, you know, it's easy to, easy to travel. Have you ever gone down roads before where they have the concrete barriers, especially when they're working on them, and they put them on bare sides, and it looks, even though you have plenty of room, when you're going down a vehicle, it doesn't matter. When you have concrete on both sides, they're real close, and they, they kind of bend them around whatever to get you to go one direction or another. It seems like you're in the tightest spot possible sometimes, and you're traveling pretty fast, and you know... If you turn that wheel just a slight, you're going to lose something or you're going to be become a part of that concrete barrier and not, not want to. And, that, and to me, this reminds me a lot of the way the scripture describes the other road. That's narrow. And that's what came to mind, how narrow sometimes that road may seem to people. And people, a lot of people don't like to travel down roads like that. They would prefer to travel something down that's wide and narrow. And according to scripture, a lot of people will accept that road according to what, how scripture lays it out. But they will accept that road because it's wide, it's easy, it's, ac- it's accessible, and that they can get to where they're going so easy and, and find enjoyment and, and excitement now. But people who travel down the narrow road have to be cautious and careful, and you have to make sure you don't sw- sway or swerve, and you have to be, pay really close attention to things that you do. And I believe this describes a lot the way the Bible describes these two scriptures, how many of you will take that road because of how narrow it is. And there are things that, that's required of them as they take that road. They don't have to be as cautious if they go down a wider road, do you? If you have three lanes of highway and there's no one around, you don't have to be as cautious, do you, that you're going to bang something up in your vehicle, or that you, you have plenty of room and you can get there fast and it's acceptable, you know, it's acceptable to you because you don't feel caged in or closed in and you can go and accomplish the things that you want to. But like I said, when you get down to those concrete barriers on both sides, my wife hates them things, and she says, just get me out of here. And, she, and so I usually end up getting to drive through those things because she doesn't care for it. But, and she, she says, as soon as you get away, we get on the other side of the road. So it gives her more security, I guess, because she has more room. But, you know, a lot of people are like that. And I think when people come, when it comes down to the point to make the choice whether or not they're going to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, it's a hard decision for them to make because they want to feel like that they, have, that they have plenty of room, so to speak. They're not traveling down a road that is narrow. And according to Scripture, the Bible says, few will choose that path because it's narrow. And it's going to be a road, it's not going to be an easy road to travel. It's a ro- road that requires expectations from God and many other things. Maybe one of the things I want to talk to you about this morning is one of those roads that God has laid out for us. It's called, known as the Roman Road. And I think it's important that we all, sometimes we relook at that and look at the road that God has laid out for us. The road has laid out for us, each of us, to offer us a plan of salvation that God has given to us. God laid out a perfect plan for each and every one of us so that we could be, have, have freedom and someday that we could call heaven our home. You know, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to know that, that we're all going to be able to go to heaven, that we have accepted Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation that he has laid out for us, and we have accepted and made all the right choices that God has laid out for us, and someday that we're, we're going to call heaven our home. And then truly I think we'll understand the, the true saying when we say there's no place like home. Because this life is just a journey. We're just passing through, aren't we? This really is not our home, even though that we may get comfortable with the places physically that we get we set up with in life, places where we grew up, the memories that we have created, but someday we're truly going to have a place that we can call home, a real place that we can that God has prepared for each and every one of us that we can we can call home. But first, we must travel down this road that uh, God has laid out for us, and that's important. And that road is called, you know, it's like I said, it's called the Roman Road. 
You know, the scripture lays out many different things. And, um, you know, the first thing we have to do is realize that we have to accept Jesus Christ who he truly, really is as our Lord and Savior, don't we? We have to believe within our heart that Jesus is who, who, who God really is and that we believe with our heart that, and we will accept those things in life. And we have to realize that we, we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I believe down this road that God has laid out for us as we look at the Roman road and the things that we can, you can read in Romans and go down through it and uh, all the different scriptures that is placed there for us to, to read. And we, we begin to realize, well, how do I know that I'm traveling this road that God has laid out for me? How do I know that this is the right road of salvation that God has laid out for me? We can recognize those road, that road by the landmark, so to speak, that God has given to us through scripture. And as we read in Romans and we read all the different scriptures that God has given to us, we can find out that we, as we touch, in, in, touch each one of those different landmarks and realize that we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, we have reached the first landmark, so to speak, and recognize that God is who he, that he is the Lord and Savior. And only through, through his blood that we can be saved, we can realize that we are traveling down the right road to salvation. The road as it begins, as you realize, it's not always going to be an easy road. It's not going to be a road that many people are going to take because the Bible describes it as a narrow road. And like I said, many people are not going to want to enter into it. And then when they realize of all the different things that they have to do to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, many won't accept him because they want to have the joy and the fulfillment of life now rather than later. You know, there's no other thing that we have to do. It's, God makes it so simple for us to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And as we travel down that road to salvation, and God begins to lay out his plan for our lives. And he tells us the things that we have to do in life to, to accept him. All we have to do is ask. So simple. No, there's no rituals or no things that we have to do in life. It's, it's just simple things that we have to do. God says all you have to do is ask and believe in my name and confess that I am Lord and Savior of your life. And, and then all, it will all be easy, so to speak. The road of life or the salvation won't be easy. But knowing that within our hearts that God has changed us is an incredible feeling. Knowing that God had made a difference within our lives and he had changed us and that, that we, we know without a certain that we're going to be in heaven with him and that we're going to be able to call heaven our home. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon my name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, that's all he says you have to do is call upon his name and believe. To today's technology, you know, it's amazing the things that we have you know, in our hands. You know, everywhere you go, you see someone carrying a little phone with them of some sort. From showing off pictures to uh, just finding out things on, on the Internet, it's amazing what, the, amazing what technology is. And, if you, and sometimes people get lost. Have you ever been lost before? You just you get out there and you just, what did you do before you had a phone and you had Internet? Some people still don't have all them things. But what did you do before you had a phone and you had internet that you could take with you almost anywhere and you could get service and figure out where you was? You'd be lost. You had to ask someone for directions. And you had to find out where, where you're at. Today, when someone gets lost, you see that phone come out and they begin to punch it. They're trying to figure out, putting their trust in that phone, and it's going to tell them, where in the world am I at? And where do I need to go? And then they, it'll talk to them and tell them, you need to go this and that way direction. But technology is amazing. You know, but so many times people get lost in life. And God is the only way that we can ever find our true way in life. If people would just realize that. All they have to do is ask and say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you to guide me and direct me. Lord, help me find myself where I'm at. Give me the things I need. And God says it's so simple. All you have to do is ask in my name. Ask me to be there and I'll be there for you. And I will help guide you and direct you in life. Many people believe they will go to heaven because they have lived a good life. They've done charity work. They've been baptized as a child, attended church, or treated others fairly. The Bible declares that none of these can live up to God's standards. None of these things are, are comparable to what God truly wants for each and every one of us. God wants us to trust in Him. God wants us to call upon His name. To believe that He is the Lord and Savior and that He is the one that can... He is the only one that can give us eternal life and full salvation in heaven. Therefore, we need a road to God that doesn't rely on anything else but him. And God laid out that plan for us in Romans. 
A plan, a road that will lead us to salvation. A road that will lead us to, to home, so to speak. A place that someday that we can come home as long as we ask God to be with us. You know, it all relies on the gift that God wants to give to us, and that is grace. God gives grace to each and every one of us, and that's amazing. A gift, I think, is overlooked in so many ways. The preciousness as, as it is, the gift that God gives to us. Like I said, the Roman road has many bends within it as you travel down this road. Let's say you're driving down here at quarter H on 48. And out there on the way somewhere, you see a speed limit sign that says 55 mile an hour. Now, honestly, if you were perfectly honest with me this morning, how many people would go 55 mile an hour? Not very many. If you would be after traveling 55 mile an hour, if that's what the speed limit sign would say, how many people you think would pass you? Probably everyone. Probably everyone. And uh, if I would drive 55, all, you all would probably pass me. And you, you would continue to go on down the road. In fact, you'd be willing to bet that if you're driving down 48, most of you would be speeding, probably considered to be speeding by law. But you would be traveling farther than what the, faster than what the speed limit would be. Now, do you, do you believe it when they put up that sign that the speed limit's 55 mile an hour? Do you really believe that, or do you, do you travel faster because you don't believe it, what the sign says? You know, it was created for a reason, maybe for safety or whatever, but believe it or not, that's what the speed limit truly is, is 55 mile an hour if there's a sign there. But many people never pay attention to that. But they don't obey the law even though they, they do believe in it. Let's say you have, you have someone that you care about in your car with you. Would you travel 55 mile an hour? Or would you go faster? If you had someone that you truly loved in your car and you wanted, to feel like, you wanted them to feel like they were safe, would you travel that speed limit or would you go faster than that? For the sake of the law, you might not keep the commandment, but for the sake of someone that you loved within your vehicle, you may. You may travel that speed limit. And not, maybe not to scare them, but to make them feel safe and secure. Accepting God as your Lord and Savior is stating that you love him. We make a decision to ask God that, to enter into our hearts. We're making that decision that we love God with all our heart, that we've accepted him as our Lord and Savior, and that we have fallen in love with him and for the things that he has given to us as good gifts. So if you love, if you love Jesus, you'll be in church. If you love Jesus, you'll study your Bible, you'll pray, you'll give to the poor. If you love Jesus, you'll be careful with what language you use or what kind of friends you hang out with, or what kinds of movies and TV shows you watch. The question is to each of us, have you truly fallen in love with God the way that you should? Have you truly accepted that path of salvation that God has laid out for us, each and every one of us? Have we gone down that road? And can we, can we honestly say that we truly love God because we are faithful to the things that He has laid out for us? As man lays out laws for us to follow each and every day, and that hardly, many, hardly anybody does follow those rules or those laws or those speed signs that they put out, but yet you believe in the law, but yet do you, do you obey it? The same it is with our Christian walk with God. We fall in love with God, but do we truly love God the way that we should, that we follow the things that he asks of us? By reading his word and doing the things that he calls Christians to do each and every day, as we travel down that road of salvation with God. Do we do those things for Him? Do we accept all the things that are required of us as Christians and, and to hold dear to them and to hold true to them? But like I said, the things that we watch on television, the way that our speech, the things that we do, perhaps maybe gossiping about someone else or anything that we get, get involved in that we shouldn't, how close do we, do we listen and read God's Word? And do we follow it as Christians? Obeying what God has called us to do as his people. Someday each and every one of us will be able to call heaven our home as long as we have accepted God and we have followed after the things that God has called us to do. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to sit down around a table with thousands of people and sit down and to share a meal with other Christians and to know when you look around you're in heaven. That you're sitting around or you're standing around the throne of God because you've been faithful to what God has called you. You've traveled down that road that God has prepared for you. And, and, and followed those landmarks and through scripture by reading God's word and knowing 
through those land, the reading God's word, that you are on the right road and on the right place to heaven. That you are traveling home. That you are, you are traveling this world and you are, preparing, you are heading forward to be home with God in glory. You know, someday, like you said, we will be able to call heaven our home. And want to be a joy to be able to sit down with God someday and to worship Him and to know that we were faithful to Him in all things that He has called us to do. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for this day You've given to us and for the opportunity that we have to serve You. And Lord, do we know through Scripture that You lay out in many, many different Scriptures the way of salvation for each and every one of us. And, and, and we use them, Lord, as, as a road for us to follow in our lives. And we use these landmarks, so to speak, in Scripture that we know without a doubt within our minds that we are following after you according to your will, Lord. And as you lay out the plan of salvation, Lord, and plans of things in our lives and the things that we are supposed to do as we follow you, Lord, I pray that we are faithful to those things. That we are continually mindful in our hearts and have the understanding that we are following after you the way that you, the things that you required of us, Lord. That we are people that are honorable. People that, will, that love you. And that they can see you living within our lives through the actions and the things that we do each and every day. That we minister to other people through our lives, Lord. That we are faithful to you. Lord, that we're not proud, boastful. But we honor you by, our, by being humble to other people. Presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, Lord. That for you working through our lives. We ask your blessing on all those that are here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.